gotta get in the tree behind this log. Roy the person 
was non-judgmental, generous with his time, kind and loving, simply a lovely, laid-back character. A man who couldn't do enough for you, and a man who was loved by everyone, and he will be deeply missed. Thank you. Now I'd like to invite Kate to speak to you. Friends and relatives who come here to be for Roy. It means a great deal to Graham, Charlotte, and I, and all of our families on this difficult day. I know that we touch your lives in so many different ways. To Graham, kid, he was a loving little brother. To Charlotte and I, a very special stepfather. My boys, Max and Jackson, a wonderful rock star with down hair Pappy. And to his nieces and nephews, a caring uncle. Raymond, son meilleur ami, qui était si proche et qui était toujours la chaque la poche à con. To many of you, he will have touched your lives through his music. I'm sure our nieces and nephews will have remembered fondly his tribute to Slade's "Merry Christmas," sang with his trademark incredibly strong voice. His life has been full of success. He played at the Cannes Film Festival and the Gala Screening of 1969 Woodstock movie, and most significantly signed to Columbia Records. His music obviously was a huge part of who he was. Stepfather 
to Charlotte Murray. So, in his own words, it's been a laugh. I thought that's just the job for me. I went to that job. I went to Auntie Tilsley. Tilsley they put her upstairs. And there they all sat there like a whole jury. I walked in with the guitar, I walked in with the amplifier. They said, right, set it up, let's see what you can do. I thought, right, fair enough. But I had two cards up my sleeve, so I knew in the end I'd get that job. And the reason being, all the other guitarists were a lot better than me. I thought, well, I'm up against it here. He said, right, can you sing? I said, I can't, no. He said, well, what can you do? I said, I can drive a van. He said, well, that's a good thing to start with. I said, he said, what else can you do? I said, well, I'll tell you what I can do. I can change your life. You're looking in Tim's garage, as I want to be carried, to a singer in Europe. How's that? He said, are you going to do that? I said, I'll tell you I'm going to do that. I'm going to take all this band into Europe in 1966 and we're going to play on the American basis. He said, that sounds good to me. And that is how things went. And probably changed his life. And that's why today we're here together just through one little tiny habit in a newspaper. So before I do leave you, what I want to do is I want you all to give a big round of applause to my friend, Mr. Roy. Thank you. Singer. 
And with all the ups and downs that that charge demands, his was a life less ordinary. And I'm going to finish now with a story for you. When I think about Roy, I could tell you lots of different stories that we did over the years, but there's one that keeps coming back to me. Uh, we, were staying, we were staying in what was little more than a wooden shack on a mountain, about 50 kilometres away from the east up in the mountains, and Roy's manager at the time decided that we should go somewhere isolated to write some songs, and the best place for this to happen would be from the distraction of the cities away from the mountains. The idea is that we would be creative, because there was nothing else to do. And it turned out that most people would just sit around in the sun and drink beer. Anyway, there were always these semi feral horses roaming around, and they would forage and graze outside the shack. And sometimes we'd feed them apples, and they kept coming back. And Roy would, Roy would watch them every day. He was almost like he was studying them. And he told me that he was going to ride one, bare back. Uh, now, you don't even know anything about horses to realise um, that spontaneously jumping onto the back of a horse when they least expect it is a pretty dangerous thing to do. And I told him, they're not broken in. They haven't been backed, they're going to throw you off. They'll most likely kick you to pieces. These horses didn't have any tack on, no saddles or bridles. But one blazing hot afternoon, I saw him walk to the edge of the balcony, just up from the horses. He was half cut, if I were to be honest. He drank a bottle of wine. <laughs> but he meant business, I could tell. It was just me and him there. He readied himself, he steadied himself. And then just like his namesake, Roy Rogers, he leapt onto the back of that one of those ponies, and that horse took off at full gallop, with all the others stampeding behind. I was convinced Roy was going to get seriously injured, fall and get stomped on. We had no phone, we had no transport, we were a 45 minute walk away from the nearest town, and not only that, I couldn't speak any French. So I just covered my eyes and waited for the inevitable disaster. But I could hear the sound of the hooves thundering across the meadow, I could hear the the horses snorting, and I could hear Roy whooping like a Comanche. And eventually I looked up. And when I did, I saw him still holding on, with his head down and his hair flying, and his legs wrapped around that pony. And eventually the horse slowed down, it turned, and it walked back to the shack, and it stopped, and Roy just got off. He had the most magnificent smile on his face. And he looked at me, and he said, I did it, I did it, man. I stayed on till the end of the ride, didn't I? He looked really happy. Yes, you did, Roy. You stayed on to the end of the ride. Ride, journey well, my friend. And nephews and nieces, Julie, Nina, Dylan, Zach and Sam. With Kate and Charlotte, and with Max and Jensen. And they wish to thank you all for being here today. Thank you. I wish to mention especially those of you who supported Roy in recent years. And you know who you are. Special thanks are given to St. John's Hospice, Flatterbridge, and to the Macmillan nurses, community nurses, and Apollo Care. And donations today go to St. John's Hospice, and we have a box to leave. You are all warmly invited back to the Riverville Hotel, Oxton, to raise a glass to Roy and to share many more memories. It's now time to say our farewells. It's a final act of love as we in our humanity accept that our time on earth is limited. We're born and we share our lives and our love. And at life's close we accept with reluctance that we must part. Please leave in the silence speaking farewells. Those of you wishing to play may do so. Death itself. It is as natural as life itself. For Roy, death came after a life filled with love and admiration for him. Roy, with absolute love, we have celebrated your life. Now the time has come and we have to say our farewells. You will be remembered as the special person in our lives and with this sentiment foremost in our minds. We wish you a final farewell, securing the knowledge that you are now in a beautiful place, still playing your music, but now with the big names gone before. And with sorrow but without fear, in love, we commit the body, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and 
Peace in your lives. Thank you. 